Well, hey guys, uh, today is September 9th, sorry, September 6th, <laughs> 9-6. Um, I'm back home. I've been home uh, uh, from down in uh, the Phoenix metro area at my daughter's, uh, but I've been home for several days now. My wife has stayed down there with her uh, to help out some stuff, and she is now on her way home, so... We'll get life back to normal. Um, the first thing I'm I'm, I'm going to try and uh, uh, try and cover is you know some of the stuff that happened on on this last trip. Um, you know, as you see through some of Chuck's videos, you know we had Wayne up there uh, on the second night that I was up there. I'm not going to try and say what day it was because right now my brain is just so scrambled. I don't know what day is what, but. So the second night, uh, Wayne was up there with us, and and you know not a lot as far as uh, twinkle lights. You know I may have seen ten of them, um, but definitely was seeing movement um, back off in in the trees. Um, thought at one point I'd seen a, a shimmering image, and I'd walked over to it, and it turned out that it was just a just a small tree. But, uh, you know, the, the activity was, was decent, um, you know, not phenomenal, but of course, you know, it's our first trip out there. And, uh, you know, that first night I had uh, the interaction uh, with a male who was 80 years old, from what I understood, and his name was Harad, and uh, he was a camp watcher, and... I, if I remember correctly, that second night, uh, we thought there was six of them uh, that were around. But, the, you know, it, it, it was just light activity, um, not a whole lot in the line of communication. Um, Wayne had left, and, you know, of course, uh, Chuck's video talks about Wayne got uh, high-centered on a log, and, you know, we had to turn headlights on, and... Yeah, get Wayne recovered off of that log. And, you know, not much happened after that, uh, which is pretty typical. Once lights come on, um, they're done. You know, so we ended up calling it a night. And, uh, you know, I had both of the windows on my tent open, one at my feet and one at my head. And I don't know what time it was. I'm guessing it was probably around 2 o'clock in the morning. I'd heard something outside the tent. And, you know, so I, the way I was sleeping, I was actually facing the back of the tent. So I kind of maneuvered, you know, rolled over to look out the window, um, you know, and, and we were under a full moon. So I, I believe that would have been Wednesday night, I think. Anyway, um, it was, it was the, the full moon, the brightest, you know, the super blue moon, brightest uh, moon of the year so far. I didn't see anything, but what I heard, it sounded like, you know, picture a 10 year old child, you know, running away. And, and that's what I heard was, you know, it was bipedal steps, but it was small steps. And, you know, so whoever was there, uh, I startled or whatever, but they ran away. And I laid there for a few more minutes, you know, listening to see if I could hear anything. I ended up going back to sleep. And, you know, so got up the next morning and, and you know, and during all this time, uh, my daughter, uh, she had been admitted to the hospital. Uh, and they were pumping her real heavy with antibiotics. Uh, you know, she had... Uh, uh, double pneumonia, uh, pneumonia in both lungs, and it got to the point to where, uh, you know, she had partial collapse in the lungs, um, meaning that, you know, the fluid and the gunk in the lungs from, uh, from the pneumonia uh, was filling up the little sacs or pockets or whatever. I'm, I'm not real sure how that works. Um, and they were talking about doing a bronchioscope. And, 
so when the doctor finally made the decision that that's what they were going to do, uh, you know, it, that was the nice part about this campsite is, you know, have uh, cell service. So I was keeping in touch with her uh, on what was going on. And when they decided that they were going to do this, uh, you know, I was going to stay one more night and pack up early and be down there in time for, for the scope. Um, but I, I, I got the mind speak. We're not going anywhere. Go be with your daughter. And, you know, and, and it was weighing pretty heavy on me. You know, so I, I, I packed up camp and I was out of there by about four o'clock, went home through everything in the garage and, and grabbed some clean clothes and mama and, and down the mountain we went and every, everything went fine. Um, the other thing was her white blood cell count kept climbing and it had climbed up to uh, 22.3 or 22.6, you know, which, which is a critical level. Uh, for white blood cell counts, but they did every test on her, you know, for everything possible, and she was negative for everything, and, and you know, just struggling to find out, you know, to figure out why her white blood cell count was going up. Well, after they did the scope and everything went fine, um, you know, she was able to uh, breathe better, and uh, long story short, she is now out of the hospital. She's home. Uh, she got home day before yesterday. Uh, so she's been home for a couple of days. She's doing fine, doing good enough. Mama doesn't need to be down there, so Mama's on her way home. She'll be home in a couple of hours. Um, looking forward to getting back up to West Side. Uh, I know there's a lot more to, uh, uh, you know, to experience up there, and it's, and it's fairly close to the house, so it's not hard to get up there. Um, I've got a lot of firewood I got to get cut, get ready for, for this winter. I, maybe a quarter of a cord is what I've cut and split already. Um, but I need a total of about four cords of wood. So I'm going to be busy over the next several weeks, uh, you know, because I can't do it all in one shot. I'm just too broken. But. Uh, you know, over the next couple of weeks, get the firewood cut and, and back to the house and stacked. And, and I'm, I'm hoping, I, I'm, I'm going to try and get out to, to Squatch Camp one more time this season. I want to get back up to uh, uh, West Side, uh, you know, figure out what's going on there. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, we're going to be into October and, you know, I've got a couple of trips I got to take back down to the valley for grandkids' birthdays. And, you know, when you have 16 grandkids, you got a lot of birthdays. But, uh, yeah, so everything's fine. Everything's dandy and life is good. Mom will be home. I'll get out and get some more wood cut today. And, uh. Get a, get a trip planned here fairly quick to get out. But uh, for now, I'm going to let you go. Uh, as always, I love each and every one of you. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your time. Uh, please, please, please be good to each other. Be good to yourselves. Stay safe. Peace out.